today it is day five of 15 days of foundation. This is where I test out a new foundation every single day for 15 days. If you're new here, all of the information for 15 days of foundation is down below. Sorry for those of you who have to hear this spiel 5,000 times. Today is a weird day. I got three hours of sleep last night and then I worked out this morning, which never happens. So during the last season of 15 Days of Foundation, I tried out the Kat Von D Locket Tattoo Foundation and a couple older foundations that I had worn before. I just hadn't ever done a full video on. So I'm doing that again in this series. This foundation is one that is obviously quite old. This is kind of a cult favorite foundation for high coverage and for oily skin. I have combination skin with acne, so in theory, this should be right up my alley. Did I even say what this is? I don't think I did. This is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. I have worn this quite a bit. I actually went back to look at old videos to see what I thought of this. And in one of my Raise and Rejects videos a couple years ago, I mentioned this foundation mixed in with the Revlon Color Stay. And that's been kind of my experience with this. This has been a foundation that on my skin looks pretty heavy and pretty cakey when it's not mixed in with something. So in the past, I have liked this mixed in with products, just not in love with it by itself. But today we're gonna be trying it out on its own so you guys can see what I think of it. When I went back and watched the two videos that I mentioned this in, Apparently, this was my first ever high-end foundation purchase, which is just wild. That video is from 2014, and now we are here. Over the years, I've probably worn this foundation alone about five to ten times. And I've worn it mixed for probably, I don't even know, over a month. But I don't think I've worn this very recently. Probably the last time was about six to eight months ago. So this is kind of like a first impression again for me too. So let's hop onto Sephora and read some of the claims. I have such a janky setup right now. My mirror is on top of my laptop, which is on top of makeup. So this retails for $39.50. Why couldn't they just make this 40 bucks? And you get one fluid ounce of product in here, which is standard. If I'm counting correctly, on Sephora, this comes in 36 shades. On Estee Lauder's UK website, it comes in a wider range. It comes in 44 shades. The lightest shade on Sephora is 1C1 Cool Bone, which is this shade right here. Back in the day, I actually had to order this thing on eBay for a absurd amount. I literally think I paid about 80 bucks for this. This is in the shade 1C0 Shell. This is the lightest shade that they make in this foundation. Even though 1C0 is listed on the UK Estee Lauder website, you can't actually order it from there if you're in the US. If you're in the US and you wanna purchase the shade 1C0, I found it on a site called Feel Unique. Free shipping in the US and it retails for $39.68 on there, so pretty much the exact same price as Sephora. So I'll leave a link to the product on Feel Unique down below along with Sephora, but that's awesome that they have it because I don't even know why I spent this much money on this. They have a ton of shades. I'm gonna start swatches right here of 1C0 and 1C1 compared to some of the other foundations that I own. All right, so swatch time right here's Estee Lauder Double Wear in the shade 1C0. Next over is Double Wear in 1C1. As you can see, there's a huge difference between these two shades. This is Dermacol 208. Next over is Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless in 110. Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation in 0 0.5 and Pure Cosmetics Bare It All Foundation in Porcelain. I wouldn't say 1C0 is a super pale foundation. For me, it matches me now. My skin has been changing. I've definitely gotten more color in the last year. I don't know. I don't know what's going on because I haven't been out in the sun. This shade used to be too dark for me still. And right now it's looking like it matches pretty well. Packaging is just a glass bottle with this gold top. I got the pump on... BDMP a while ago, years ago. So let's read some of the claims. It says it's a 24 hour flawless foundation that stays looking fresh and natural throughout heat, humidity, and nonstop activity. I don't know how active my day is gonna be today. On Estee Lauder's website, it says 15 hour staying power. On Sephora's website, it says 24 hour staying power. Natural looking and carefree coverage. A lightweight, oil-free, and buildable formula. That's all the claims. It does have SPF 10, which isn't super significant, so you probably still wanna use a moisturizer with SPF underneath. If you guys are excited for 15 Days of Foundation, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. I am pre-recording these. I'm recording this right now. I haven't even posted the announcement video yet. If there's any live time updates, like when this video is going up, I will put it down below in the comments and just pin the comment. You can also follow along on all of my social media. They're over here. So if you wanna see what I think of the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation, and how it applies and where it's throughout the day. You're in the right place, just keep watching. Extremely sleep deprived right now, but I've had like four cups of coffee, so I think we're good to go. So I've already washed, moisturized, and primed my face. We're gonna use the Morphe E31 brush on one half of my face and my Real Technique sponge on the other. Since I have used this before, I know for a fact that 1C1 is too dark for me. 1C0 shell is definitely closer. In the video where I mentioned mixing this with the Revlon Color Stay, I used the Real Technique sponge to apply it, and I said that I liked it best with the sponge, but we're gonna try out both. The one thing I've always felt with this is that for some reason on my skin, it doesn't look quite as 
completely opaque as on other people. I would still call this full coverage, but you can still see my dark kind of acne scars coming through. And when I used to wear this, I kind of had to put on, okay, this watch. I had to either spot conceal or put on a tiny bit more for a second layer just on those spots. With the brush on this half of my face, it looks fine eyebrow down, but on my forehead, it's not looking super great. Looks pretty heavy on the center of my face and it's also picking up on some dry patches up here. So let's go in with a sponge on this side. Literally holding my watch as I do this right now. <laughs> yeah, I definitely prefer how this applies with a sponge better. I feel like a sponge helps it make it look a little bit less heavy. And on my forehead, it definitely looks better on the sponge side. On any spots that are still coming through, like down here, some acne and over here, I'm just gonna go back in with the sponge and do a thin second layer. This foundation in the past has caked up pretty easily on me and looked pretty heavy. So I'm gonna use as little product as possible. This does build, it is covering, but again, just be careful that you don't use too much product. On the parts that looked dry on my forehead before, going over it with the sponge definitely helped to bring some life back into my skin. The center of my forehead looks a lot better now. Bending over my table right now, but here's what the foundation looks like up close. Definitely looks better once I went over it with the sponge, less textured. So when I used to mix this with the Revlon Colorstay, I didn't powder my face and apparently it stayed on all day. This one is supposed to be a stay in place, long wear makeup, so I'm not gonna powder my face. And in the past when I have tried to powder my face with this, it looks way too heavy and it kind of makes my foundation settle into any crease lines that I have. So right now it is 11.15. I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup and I will be right back. Okay, so it's now 11.50. That one took me a while. I'm gonna call the check-in time 11.20 since that's about when I finished up my face makeup. I did not set my face with a powder. Everything blended out really easily on top. It didn't feel like it had any kind of drag or stick to it. My concealer though went on a little weird. I used my normal Tarte Shape Tape. I got a little bit of weird texture under there. It might just be because my under eyes are dry right now. It's looking much more luminous under these lights than it is when I'm out of the lights. When I went in the bathroom mirror and looked in this mirror, it looked totally matte. It just looks like I'm wearing foundation. It looks a little bit heavy. Right now it's not really caking up or creasing anywhere yet. It just looks heavy. It looks like I have makeup on, but we'll see how it wears throughout the day. Maybe I'll think differently of it now. So on the rest of my face, I had to wear this again because I used the CoverFX bronzer in Sunkist again with the Sigma F15 brush and I love it with this. This is beautiful. If you have fair skin, I like this 50 times better than the Hula Light bronzer, which I have a whole video on. Use the Physician's Formula Butter Blush in Plum Rose. And then I used Hourglass Ethereal Light Ambient Lighting Powder as a highlight. I just wanted something that was gonna make my skin look a bit more natural and skin-like. So I used the Makeup Forever Liquid Lipstick in 103. And then on top of that, I put my favorite Wet n Wild Nudie Patootie. And then all of my eyeshadows right now are the Coastal Sense Revealed 2 palette. This is also from back in the day. This used to be one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes. So all of my eyeshadows are this palette. I still like it. I'm not quite as obsessed with it as I used to be. And then my eyelashes are Black Magic Lashes in Alpha Girl. Let's set the alarms for check-ins. I'm going to go attempt to get my life together right now. <laughs> Next check-in I do will be a natural lighting and I will see you guys in a few hours. My eyelashes are all up in me right now. All right, so it's now 4.30, so foundation's been on for five hours. I took an impromptu trip to Home Goods with Christy. We just did some major damage. Yeah, we did. <laughs> so the foundation's been on for five hours. I feel like, I feel like it just looks like my foundation. I like guess one of those foundations. It's just a foundation. That you can see on your yeah. face. Yeah. It is starting to crease a little bit around my nose and around my mouth. Nothing major on my upper lip yet. I don't have my vlog camera, but we're in the car. So I'm on my phone. You can see like all my peach fuzz right here. <laughs> I'm not getting any oil or anything coming through yet. So that's good. I didn't powder my face. So I'm going to keep wearing this and I will check in with you guys at the end of the night. I don't know if I keep doing this. Don't, don't. Put I've it done in. this like 14 times. Put it in. Hey guys. <laughs> okay, so it is now 9.30 p.m. So the foundation's been on for 10 hours. And today actually turned into a really good day. These are happy tears. I just posted the announcement video today in my time. And I've been reading through your comments for the last two hours. And I'm just so... I have no words. I feel so grateful that I have this community and... Okay, we're here. We got it. Just know that it means so much to me and I appreciate everything and all of your support. The t-shirts have been up for literally two hours now, a little over two hours, and we've already raised over a thousand dollars. So thank you guys so much 
I don't even know where we'll be at by the time this video goes up. Put it in the comments and I'll pin it and I'll be updating guys on social media too with how much we've raised. A few of you guys were asking if I could make heck yeah t-shirt versions so I started looking into that and I'm going to do that so hopefully I mean, you guys will already know by the time this video goes up, but those should be up when you're seeing this video. And I think I'm going to try and do it on black t-shirts. But anyways, onto the foundation. The oil has held up very well, I must say. Like, after 10 hours, I'm barely oily on my forehead. It is separating a tiny, tiny bit on the center. I'm not getting as much creasing as I normally do when I only wear this product. I don't feel like my blush and bronzer have held up very well. I feel like they've kind of totally rubbed off. Like I can't even see my blush right now. Around my nose area and stuff, it doesn't look as bad as it has in the past when I've only used this. The thing that I'm not totally in love with about this is that it just looks like makeup, which I think I've said 10 times by now. If you like this foundation on its own, let me know what kind of if you use a powder, if you use a different primer or what, it just looks and feels a bit heavy to me. Wearing it today, I definitely don't hate this on its own at all. I do still prefer mixing this in with other foundations, but this has kind of inspired me to bring this out again and see which foundations I like mixing it with and if there's a good combo because it has held up really well. So whenever I find products like this that hold up well and that help control my oil, those are always products that I like to mix in with other foundations. So here's what it looks like zoomed in. I mean, after 10 hours, yeah, I think this looks pretty good. You could still see some stuff coming through in Target. Like, it doesn't look totally, totally full coverage to me. It's rubbed off in certain places, like where I've been rubbing my nose, which is kind of expected. But without a powder, I mean, I think it looks pretty good right now. So for the wrap-up video, I'll definitely try mixing this in with foundations, and I'll let you guys know if I find a combo that I really like. But I hope you guys liked this video and found it helpful. If you did, make sure you give this a thumbs up. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye.